Hey everybody, this is David Bradley from richmansgym.com and this is the Rich Man's Gym Podcast, a personal development podcast dedicated to strength and conditioning for body, mind, and spirit. So if you, like me, are looking to level up and then tap into that true potential of yours, then you, my friend, you are in the right place. So thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. And hey, check it out. If you're getting some value from the podcast, please and thank you in advance. Thank you so much for sharing this out into cyberspace so that other folks can benefit from it too and make sure that you hit that subscribe button so if you like this one you don't miss another episode moving forward so just thank you one more time thanks in advance for doing that today we're gonna be talking about something pretty serious okay and before i get into that though let's just have a quick word for two of our sponsors are you ready to finally stop smoking but don't know where to start this book how to stop smoking without killing anyone is here to help written by a smoker for a smoker you will receive the step-by-step guidance and strategies you need to finally kick the habit before the habit leads to you kicking the bucket Imagine yourself back in control of your health and your life. Visit StopDon'tQuit.com right now and start your journey back into the non-smoking section. That's StopDon'tQuit.com. StopDon'tQuit.com. Hey, hey, it's David Bradley here with RichMan'sGym.com, and I'm trying out a new line of supplements so you don't have to. And no, it is not a super soldier serum as much as I wish it was, but it might just be the closest thing to it. Listen, every day I take the same three things, sometimes multiple times a day. Essential amino acids, right, for overall recovery and pre-workout. I also take green for immunity and general detox and cleansing, and I take a red for heart and blood health. For 30 servings of those things, I will easily, I mean easily, drop 180 bucks. Now recently I tripped into a company called Live Good and I was able to get the greens, the reds, the EAAs, essential amino acids for how much? How much? 18, 18, 18. That's right. 54 bucks for these three. But Dave, are they any good? I don't know, honestly. But I'm gonna find out and I'm gonna get back to you. Again, like I said, I'm testing out a new line of supplements so you don't have to. So check back with me in a couple weeks. I'm gonna have a full review. Do they taste good? Do they have an effect? Do I notice a difference? How's it impacting my body comp? Full review. And where do they get the ingredients? What's in these things for real? Are they even good for you? Are they comparable to the name brand, right? Are you getting value from this? And then if you don't want to wait, right? You want to go check them out yourself. You want to go on this journey with me, head on over to livegood.com forward slash rich man's gym. That's livegood.com forward slash rich man's gym.com. And you too can get these for 18 bucks a pop with your membership. Okay. So get some more information on that. Livegood.com forward slash Rich Man's Gym. Hit me up with any questions. I'm happy to talk to you about it. And stay tuned because in two to three weeks, full breakdown of whether or not this is a good deal or not. It's time for a quick update on the grace. Great! So, uh, I actually went backwards last week. So every other week I go for the full PR. Last time I did it, I was at, when I went for it, it was five minutes, 23 seconds, and 36 milliseconds. This week, it took a, a week for strength. And then I come back one more time, 135, 135 pounds on the bar, 30 repetitions. I did it in five minutes and 30 seconds. So I went a little bit backwards and I think I went a little too hard, too fast in the very, very beginning. I didn't pace myself. So I gassed out a little bit sooner and didn't have enough juice to get through. Next week, it's a strength week. And then the week after that, I'm gonna see if I can get myself below that 523, but keep stay, keep following along. And if you got any tips on how to get through grace quick, Let me know because I'm open to it. Okay. Quote of the week comes from my good friend, Mr. Tim Grover, his book, Relentless. Page 78, if you want to read along. Here we go. In order to have what you really want, you must first be who you really are. Okay. Take that one with you into the week. All right. Let's get into today's. Okay. Today, we're going to be talking about a uh, unpopular opinion. Strokes are on the rise in younger folk. Now, I don't know if I've officially transitioned out of youth, but I feel young and I'm going to act young and I'm going to behave as if, right? But here's the deal. People under 50 are having strokes more often. So what's that all about? So this this comes right from the American Stroke Association. They're reporting that strokes for people under 50 is continuing to increase and it has been for the last 30 years. Now, May, which we just wrapped up, I did not know this, May was... Uh, National Stroke Awareness Month. I was not aware. Um, But in a recent article, I saw it on Twitter, it was posted by Fox News, there's this story. And 
Um, here's the quote. About 15% of all strokes occur in adults under 50. That comes from Tracy Morton, and she's with the American Heart and Stroke Association. So she's paying attention to this stuff. So uh, there's this article uh, that, we, that I mentioned I saw on Fox, and they talk about a guy. His name is Daniel Gaynor, and um, here's his story. It's Thanksgiving week. So imagine going into <laughs> the holiday season with your family and then having to like unexpectedly deal with a stroke. So, but it starts out for Daniel. He's got a really bad headache uh, that was in the beginning. It was actually what he didn't know, but he was having a brain bleed. Uh, and then that eventually led to organ failure and his odds from his doctor, his odds of surviving were not in his favor at this point. His wife was told to prepare for the worst. Like nobody wants to get that talk. Now here's the kicker. He was 29 years old. And this experience used to be incredibly rare for people under 50. Now, way more common. But why? The why part's where we're going to get to start. And this is also where we get to insert the unpopular opinion or opinions part. So Daniel's doctor, uh, Muhammad L. Ganem, hopefully I said that right. He's quoted in the article as saying this. In my opinion, quote, in my opinion, it's more of the unhealthy life that we're living. A lot of junk food, unhealthy food. People tend not to exercise because of their work and their busy lives. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering either silently or out loud. You're asking the, the elephant in the room question, right? Was he vaccinated? <laughs> right? So, um, hey, listen, we could totally waste a crap ton of time asking, wondering, probing into that but I want to keep something in mind. This type of thing has been on the rise for 30 years. So I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that in this situation, the vax probably had not a whole heck of a lot to do with any of it. In fact, the bittersweet element of COVID as a whole is that it exposed the consequential reality of poor diet and lack of exercise. So if you're a young person, pay attention because I'm going to break down the five leading causes for strokes in young persons. Here they are. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. Top five causes of strokes in the young people. So you know what else is on the rise in people under 50? Let me tell you, these five things are on the rise in younger people, people under 50. Number one cause of high blood pressure, not enough exercise. Number one cause of high cholesterol, poor diet. Number one cause of heart disease, high blood pressure and high cholesterol, go figure. Number one cause of type two diabetes, overweight, obesity, physical inactivity. Number one cause of obesity, eating large amounts of processed fast food that is high in fat and sugar. As I've been saying for years, guys, you cannot outrun a donut. So now what? Right, is my my buddy Michael Cirilla does this way better than me, but it, it could be a moment, a Barney Fife moment here. So now what am I gonna do? So what are we gonna do? Well, for starters, why not you know take better care of yourself, like stop eating like crap and start moving your body more. There it is, soapbox officially mounted, and and the thing is, it, it like if you're in this situation, all it requires literally is a little bit, a little bit more discipline, a little bit, not a lot. And, and I promise you, it is nowhere near as much as you think. Do not allow your addiction to sugar and sweets, comfort food, to talk you out of this. It's not as hard as you think. So, and then there's the other thing. If you're believing that you don't have time, the reality is, the reality is you just have not made it a priority yet, period. So just don't... Like, don't wait until you actually have a stroke to make the decision to eat better and move more because by then, well, could be too late. So, you know, I used to weigh over just over 200 pounds, um, did not eat right well enough, drank a lot, and didn't move my body enough. So there were three really solid books that I've read that have helped me get control of my diet and my exercise, and it was not as hard as one thinks. So the first book... Um, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you three. First one is Perfect Weight America, written by a guy named Jordan Rubin. It is an easy read, 
Very, very simple. Jordan makes a very solid case for better eating habits. And then he lays out a full plan for you uh, and me. Burn fat, boost energy, improve digestion, reduce stress, and then cleanse some toxins uh, out of the body. And I started this book right when it came out in 2008. And it really helped me with shedding some of the last bit of uh, booze belly, if you will, uh, after I got sober in 2007. By 20, 2009, uh, I'm ready to level up and lean out even more. Number two, enter the warrior diet by Ori Hoffmeckler. Uh, Pavel Satseline uh, turned me on to this book and it was a game changer for me, not just physically, but mentally. And Ori Hoffmeckler, as far as I'm concerned, he lays the groundwork for what winds up becoming the intermittent fasting uh, trend. And I still follow the basic premise myself. And uh, this diet allows you to get in touch with your innate survival ancestral self and the eating and the exercise routines inside they're going to give you a new level of energy new level of a level of bigger while leaning you out pretty quick okay and then the third book is the primal blueprint this is by mark sisson uh i don't know if you've ever seen mark's daily apple but this is that mark okay and mark basically picks up uh where ori hoffmeckler leaves off and he validates the warrior diet uh while adding a lot more detail and some lifestyle elements. Additionally, the Primal Blueprint is where this whole paleo thing gets started. And like the Warrior Diet, you're gonna find diet and exercise routines that are incredibly simple that anybody can do. That anybody can do. I bought this book because I heard Mark talking to Joe Rogan several years back and everything that he said just made perfect sense. So I wanted to read the book. And I got a ton out of it and so will you. So the order I'm listing these things in, it would actually be the recommended order to read them in too, okay? Now listen, final thoughts. What do you think it costs to have a stroke? Like what's that gonna run you? So according to the Journal of Stroke and, oh man, this is gonna be hard to pronounce. Cerebrovascular, I'm guessing that's blood vessels in your head. Uh, some, there's a journal that writes about those things. Uh, the average cost of hospital stay with insurance. The average cost of a hospital stay with insurance for a stroke patient can range anywhere from twenty to forty-three thousand dollars. And while the medical bills are adding up, stroke patients they're not working either, so they don't have any income coming in and bills are stacking up, no income. It's a recipe for bankruptcy, okay? And in 2023, the year we're in right now, half of Americans, half of Americans have less than $500 in savings with 18% having like absolutely nothing at all. The three books I just talked about probably wouldn't run you more than 35 bucks. Okay, so what's the bottom line? Bottom line is you can't afford a stroke. Neither can your family. Forget the money for a second. Let's just talk about the emotional cost for a second. Stress accelerates aging and insulin resistance, which leads to comfort eating and fat gain, which leads to more strokes. So by you having one, you literally increase the odds of your loved ones having one too. So just don't have one. Take better care of yourself. It's 1,000% avoidable uh, if you shop at the market better and you move more and you practice discipline, meaning you delay gratification. So get those books if you need them. Get support from your friends and family. Keep it simple and start taking better care of you. And that's all I got to say about that. Search the Forrest Gump quote right there. Okay, that is a wrap for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you staying here to the end. What decisions are you going to make about your diet and your exercise and your lifestyle? Is there anything you need to tweak? Share with me what you're currently doing to take care of yourself. Leave me something in comments so I know what you're doing. And if you need help with that, let me know. I'm happy to give you some tips. If you've read those books, man, throw me your two cents on that as well. Um, remember, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and do that. If this was valuable to you or you know somebody needs to share it, hear it, share it out into cyberspace so that other folks can benefit from it too. Thank you so much for listening. This is Rich Man's Gym, strength and conditioning for body, mind, and spirit. Train anywhere, and I'll talk to you soon.